Hey guys, happy Thursday, which is something I don't normally say. Uh, yesterday just kind of got away from me, couldn't find time to make a video. So here we are. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at a different uh, slash new way to manage Docker containers. Uh, what we're gonna take a look at is, uh, is a Docker container called Yacht. Uh, Yacht was uh, developed by uh, somebody that I met online here a few months ago. We've been kind of going back and forth uh, with, uh, this is Self-Hosted Pro. Uh, there's also another channel called Geeks who has been working uh, with Self-Hosted Pro, kind of the three of us and a bunch of other people behind the scenes that I'm not aware of have been working on this project called Yacht. Uh, and you can kind of think of it as uh, an alternative to Portainer as far as the way it works, but Portainer is kind of geared towards, uh, it, in a more general sense, kind of a, a bigger audience, uh, somebody who's very in depth with technology and that sort of thing. And what they're trying to do with Yacht is simplify it and make it uh, more user-friendly for the average user here. Hey guys, one thing I forgot to mention and I didn't realize it until I was editing is that uh, this should be available for both uh, desktop x86 processors as well as ARM or Raspberry Pi processors. Uh, so you shouldn't have any problem deploying this on either platform. So just wanted to throw that in. Uh, back to the video. Uh, and so if we actually jump over to my desktop. Okay, so here is the login screen for Yacht. Uh, then we come over here, we can put in um, admin at uh, yacht.local and then pass. Uh, that's going to be your default password there. Of course, you can come up here uh, to the top right, click user and uh, change your password, that sort of thing. Uh, but let's go back to our dashboard. When we first log in, this is what our dashboard is gonna look like. Uh, of course, yours will look a little different depending on uh, how many containers you've got, that sort of thing. Uh, but I really dig that from here, you can see uh, what containers you've got. Uh, you can see uh, how much CPU and memory they're using. Uh, they've got kind of a little uh, bar chart going on down here. Uh, like down here, for instance, we've got MB using quite a bit of memory, uh, or it was, uh, it's come down a little bit, but you can kind of see these things pop up and down uh, as different resources are being used. Um, like for here, Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, that one was memory usage was 1%. Second ago, I think it was like 12. Um, so these are all in real time what's going on. Uh, here we can see upbeat underscore Borg uh, is kind of doing its thing here. Um, so you can see all of this in real time and I really dig that. That's kind of one of the limitations to Portainer is you can see one container at a time if you go in and look at the, this, the, the data for that one container. I love having all of this in one location. Below that, we've got applications. Uh, we can view all of our applications that are running in a list format here. Of course, we can switch this to show all. Uh, we can see the name, the status, the image, uh, and what port that it's on. And of course, uh, below that, you know, we can click that port and it'll open up here, view applications, there we go. So now, again, we can click all here, we can get all this information, uh, but under this little uh, arrow, we can start, stop, restart, kill, or remove our containers here as well. Uh, so very, very intuitive interface here, I think. Uh, below that, we've got uh, new applications. Uh, we can just kind of go in and fill in the blanks uh, step by step. Um, you fill in the information here, then you go to the next page, you fill in the information there. Um, and they've made it very simple to, to just kind of follow along and fill in the blanks. Um, so if we were to do like uh, Plex, just as an example, uh, we could do uh, Linux server slash Plex. Uh, we'll change the restart policy to unless stopped and then go to continue. Uh, the ports, uh, we can do like uh, 32400 and we can click continue. And then from here for volumes, then we can go in and we can say <clears throat> um, a config. Of course, we need a configuration folder here. And what they've actually done, and I'll, I'll show this here in a, uh, a bit more detail in a moment, is uh, we can then go um, exclamation point config. And that's a variable that you can set in the back end. And I'll show that in just a second. Uh, so that's where the configuration folder would go. Um, so in fact, let me just show that real quick. Let me pop this open in a new tab. You go to template variables and here's config. That's the variable that I had just put in uh, over here and host. And uh, right here is what it will automatically fill in, which is yacht app data config. Now, if you want to, uh, you could change that. You could say SRV slash app data slash config. You can put that wherever you want. If you've got an external drive that you use or a different drive that you use, you can adjust all of these to fit your needs. Um, so I really like that they've made this very, very simple. You don't have to try to remember uh, all of these different paths. Uh, once you get familiar with it, you'll know where downloads goes or where music goes or whatever the case may be. They've made this super, super simple. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come back over to here. We've got our config folder. That's all we're gonna put in for right now. Uh, we'll go to continue. 
Uh, and we've got our environmental variables, you know, where we might have, uh, you know, PUID uh, of 100 and 0.998 for me. And then we'll add another one would be like PGID, uh, like so, and that would be 100 for me. And you just go in and you fill all of your env environmental variables in here. And then once you're done with all of that, uh, you can go down here and set your kernel options or your capabilities. You know, if you need sysadmin or sysmodule or whatever, you can add all of those. Uh, and once you're done, you just click deploy, give it a few minutes to do its thing, just like you would in Portainer. And then you're de you've deployed a new, con a new uh, container or application on your system using uh, Yacht. So I think they've done a really good job with that. Uh, the other thing that I really like is they've also got templates, uh, just like Portainer does, uh, but they've done something that I really, really dig here. Uh, what I want to do, I don't have anything showing here, but we can add one. So we're going to call this uh, self-hosted, and then we're going to come over here to the self-hosted pro page. We're just going to grab uh, their template. Uh, we're just going to fill this in. We'll click submit, just like that. Now we've got the option here to view, update, or delete. We're going to click view. And just like we saw uh, in my video I did a few months ago about install uh, 80 plus applications with one click or whatever it was titled, uh, this is very similar to that. So now we can just click on uh, view if we want more information uh, or we can, uh, let's exit out of that or we can click on deploy and then we can go through all of these steps again, but you can see it's already filled in with the name, the image, the restart policy. Um, our ports are already set up. Our volumes are already set up. Um, our environmental variables are already set up, but if there is one you need to fill in, you can just do that. So we can say uh, Amer oops, America slash Denver, like so. And then you click deploy and it's just like it was before. Um, so we just give it a few minutes to let it do its thing. And then it deploys the container on your server. The other thing that I wanted to show here is that with templates, you can actually have multiple templates in here if you wanted to. Uh, Portainer only allows us to have one template. Uh, these guys have done a big favor if you had different repositories or different uh, templates or whatever, you could add multiple templates to this and have an even larger library to pull from. Uh, so I really, really dig that they've done all of that. Um, under settings, uh, you can import and export your configurations. So once you get this set up the way you want, export your configuration, save it somewhere. If you got to reinstall, re-import your configuration, and it's just set up just like it was before, much, much more simply. Uh, so I really dig that. Again, we've got uh, template variables here as well, uh, but we've already kind of covered that. So now that we've gone through kind of the process of what does uh, Yacht do, how does it work, that sort of thing, let's talk about installing it. Uh, installing it, actually, we're going to do this in a command line uh, in SSH. We're going to run two commands and then we're done. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this. This is my, my big server. We're going to close that. Uh, we're also going to close that because that's the same thing. Over here, uh, this is my little test server. This is my Tanix. Uh, I've got three uh, uh, containers running. I've got uh, Paper Merge, Droppy, and Portainer. So all we've got to do is come over here. Uh, of course, you can use whatever SSH program you like. I'm going to use Putty. I promise. I promise. I know there are a million different ways to do this. I like Putty. I know that Windows has it built in. I just like Putty. So I'm going to use Putty. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in uh, Tanix. Uh, local. And then just like always, I'm going to drag this up and log in as root. And then uh, we're here on my desktop or on my, my home folder. So what we're going to do uh, is I'm just going to come over to here, open that. I'm actually going to close that. And then I'll make that over there. So what we'll do, come over to here. Uh, and of course, all of this will be linked in the description uh, down below. But right here, these are the two commands you're going to run. Uh, the first one is a Docker volume create yacht, just like that. That's done. We just copied and pasted that. Now this one, uh, we're going to have to change it just a little bit. Um, because we've already got Portainer running on port 8000, what I'm going to do is change this to like um, 8123, uh, just like that. But here we can see the volume is going to run on the Docker socket. Uh, we're going to mount that. And then the volume is just going to be that yacht that we created. And that's it. So I'm going to paste that unable to find it locally. So it's going to pull everything. Uh, and then once that's done, it'll extract and deploy. And then we'll go over here to port 8123. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that it has deployed. So what I'll do is I will uh, make that full screen there. And we'll do uh, Tanx uh, 8123. Just like that. Now we've got our, our uh, yacht set up here. Again, this is admin at uh, yacht.local and pass just like that. And these 
automatically pull in. I didn't have to tell it to do anything. It deployed and it automatically found all of the containers that were already there. So again, we can click this, we can see what's going on. We can look at the processes that are going on. We can look at any logs that are in here uh, from when it deployed, the things that it's doing, that sort of thing. Stats, again, we can look at CPU usage and memory usage in real time uh, with, I think, a little bit of historical data here. Um, so that's basically it. That's Yacht in a nutshell. Um, again, this is uh, kind of somewhere between alpha and beta. I actually just got uh, a message from uh, Self Hosted Pro yesterday uh, via Discord where he let me know that this was kind of a good time to start talking about Yacht. Uh, so that's what I wanted to do in this video was give you an idea that Yacht is coming. It's a very cool thing. You can definitely deploy it and use it right now. Again, everything will be linked in the description down below. So I highly encourage you to check this out and, and participate in the community so you can kind of, kind of have your voice heard for ideas or thoughts or anything like that uh, that may help improve uh, this container. So uh, while you're down there, there are a couple of other links besides just the links to this. Uh, that if you want to check out, that would be cool. The first one is coffee. That's like a one-time tip jar. Uh, there's also Patreon. I've got, I think, four different levels at which you can subscribe presently. Uh, the three, five, and ten dollar levels will give you early access to my content when it's available. Uh, the five and ten dollar levels will not only give you that, but access to a private Discord server for patrons only. So I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say in this video. Uh, again, this is a weird video because it's on Thursday. I don't do videos on Thursday usually, but I missed one yesterday, thought I should make up for it. So here we are. Um, but I guess with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video. Thank you.